Hello, I'm uh, Julien Gibon. I'm an assistant uh, professor in the biology department at uh, UBCO. So what got me interested in science? Uh, since I'm very little, actually, I always wanted to understand how the body functions, like the respiratory system or brain, everything. So when I was a kid, my first uh, job that I wanted to do was a teacher, a teacher in biology and for high school students. And then I met with, uh, with some researcher and I really got interested in, in that work. What does that mean? What is doing research basically in a lab? So I went on and do a master and then a PhD and then a postdoc and here I am now an assistant professor. So that's really trying to understand how the body functions. That's what drives me in research. In my lab, what we study is the brain. So we try to understand how the brain functions. We want to uh, understand the way neurons encode short-term memory. So what is short-term memory? That's basically a memory for very short events, like somebody is giving you a cell number and you want to remind that cell number because you want to call it back, but you need to retain that information for a very short period of time, usually 30 seconds to one minute maximum. And that's short-term memory. Our brain is able to keep that information for a short period of time. And that's what I'm studying, how neurons, so neurons, which are actually those little cells that you see here on the screen, how neurons are able to keep that information for 30 seconds to one minute. But that activity of short-term memory is the first one to disappear in neurodegenerative disease, like Alzheimer's disease, for instance. People just don't remember where they put the keys, or at, and at the end, the long-term memory, so the longer process, the souvenirs disappear. And short-term memory is crucial, actually, to get long-term memories. You need to start with short-term memories, so events that you remember for 30 seconds, and then to build on those events to create a long-term memory or a souvenir. One of the most exciting things that uh, we discover actually in my lab is how neuronal activity, so the way neurons send message between, between them, is regulated inside the brain. So we discovered that some molecules that are released by the brain are actually able to inhibit that activity. What does that mean? That means that at one point your brain, if you just gather lots of lots of information, you will have an overexcitation. And that's not good. That's basically what you see in a brain during an epileptic seizure, for instance. There is too much activation there. And we found a molecule that is actually able to decrease that activity and to prevent hyperexcitability inside the brain. And I think that was one of the most, uh, most exciting discoveries here because that has lots of impact on the human health. Okay, so what we see uh, on the screen here all those very uh, bright things here are actually neurons. So those are the cells that are composed in your brain. So those are part of, your, of the brain. So every single one here is an individual neuron. So we are able to culture them in, a, in small petri dish that are on top of the microscope here now. So we have many different cells in the brain. We have some that are called astrocytes because they look like stars. And we have some neurons. So we culture them in different dishes. The astrocytes go in, a, in large flasks and they like to divide, so they, they will take a lot of space. And the neurons, they don't divide, so they like much smaller space, basically. So we culture them in a small dishes like that, whichever, the bottom of it is uh, with a glass, so that's why we can use it on the microscope. The whole environment here is completely sterile. So we need to be uh, very careful and, uh, and very, clean when we work inside that environment. So that's why I'm wearing gloves and lab coats all the time. And what we look here is the calcium inside the cell. So calcium is necessary for almost everything to have a cell that is functioning. And what we look in those experiments is how calcium is going in or out of the cell. When it's very bright like that in red, it means there is lots of calcium. When it's blue, there is almost no calcium there. So we do experiments to try to figure out how that calcium become more rich inside those cells and how can we regulate that. So all of those are basically ax axons, I mean parts of the neurons, I should say, and they will make connections between them. And signal will go from one cell to another with those connections. 
if <laughs> if there is more calcium in, uh, not exactly, but uh, that, that could be an idea. <laughs> Cheese is very good. There could be too much calcium. Uh, yes, that's a very good question. So if a cell has too much calcium, it's actually a signal for the cell to die. So that is very bad. So, but it's not happening when you eat calcium. That's really not happening when you eat calcium. It's when basically the overall concentration of calcium becomes very, very dense inside a media. But uh, it's more a signal from the cell. So that the cell is not able to buffer the calcium. Normally we have, uh, we have signal inside the cell that when you have calcium going in, we have mitochondria, if you have seen that in, in lectures or in course, that those little organelles are there to buffer the calcium. But sometimes they don't work super well, like in uh, Parkinson's disease, for instance. And then the cells can be very sensitive and die. So I think the biggest challenge when you become an assistant professor is that you don't have much time to spend at the bench. So doing experiment yourself. So how to overcome that is really to, to speak with your students. Okay, you go, you have lots of meetings, and you try to mentor them in doing their research and their experiments. So I think that was the, the biggest challenge for me, that basically stop doing experiments because you have almost no more time to do them. As a kind of a simple advice that I would give to, uh, to every, every student is, yes, working hard is obviously very important if you want to succeed, but if you can work hard on something that passion you, will be so much easier. So if you have uh, an interest in any kind of discipline, you will find that very easy to actually work hard on that discipline than anything else. So I would really give you an advice to, to go for your passion.